Next, we have Hans, we have Hans van Loo from Belgium. And uh, Dr. Me mentioned DNRs, diagnosis not reaches. So Hans is looking at some alternative causes of abortions that are not routinely diagnosed. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> um, in my presentation, I want to speak uh, about the detection of chlamydia species and chlamydia-like organisms in uh, placental tissue of bovine uh, abortions. So I live in the northern part of Belgium, so I'm talking about beef cattle and, and, and dairy cattle uh, of Flanders, of course. So to start, I'm going to tell you a little bit of history. Uh, in 2003, uh, Belgium offici officially received the brucellosis free status. And then, seven years later, uh, a new risk-based surveillance program was started to monitoring the bovine brucellosis in Belgium. Um, this program was based on four pillars. And the, four sp the first pillar is um, a serological analysis of important cattle from not officially free countries. Then there was also a random sampling of national traded and imported cattle from officially free countries, of course. And then the third thing was the winter screening, a winter screening of herds with no abortions declared and herds with imported cattle from, uh, from risk countries during the last years, during the last three years. But the fourth and last uh, and most important pillar is the oblig obligatory abortion investigation of uh, ruminant abortions in Belgium, in Flanders, in this context. So in this uh, abortion monitoring program, uh, we did some serological analysis on the serum of the dam. For example, Rizal abortus, Neospora caninum, BHV1, BVD virus, Leptospira harjo, and Q fever. On the fetus, we did some uh, uh, analysis for bacteriological, uh, some bacteriological analysis. But we also, perf also performed a histological examination on the lung if we found one bacterium in large numbers and in pure culture in the fetal lung and in the abomasum. Um, besides, we also performed a histological examination on the heart and brain tissue of the fetus if we found some antibodies in the serum of the dam, if the, if the dam was seropositive for neosporocaninum. We also performed some virological examinations on the fetus uh, for BVD virus. We did an ELISA antigen uh, check, and we also did a PCR for Bluton virus and Schmallenberg virus uh, the, during the last years. Here you can see a graph with the results of our uh, abortion, uh, abortion monitoring program. And you can see, I will not go further into detail, but you can see we reached a diagnostic rate of about 40%. Maybe it's not bad. I think it's quite good if you look, if you compare it with the results of uh, other countries. But I think we can do better. I think we, knew, we need to know what the causes are of the other 60% uh, of the abortions. Of course, I think we, we all know that there are a lot, a lot of abortion cases caused by um, non-infectious things like uh, um, yeah, malnutrition or things like that. But I think there are a lot of new or maybe non-diagnosed infectious causes that can me, maybe play a role in the other 60% that are non-diagnosed in this protocol. So if you look at the lit literature, you can uh, find some yeah, several papers that uh, um, talk about the evidence of the involvement of chlamydia and chlamydia-like organisms in bovine abortion. So based on these papers, we designed a study to find out, of, of, uh, to find out if chlamydia and chlamydia-like organis organisms are of importance in Belgium and Flanders. So we took the first, uh, next um, 163 late-term late abortions from the abortion monitoring program. We, of course, we performed the abortion monitoring analysis from the program, but we also took a sample from the, from, from the placenta, and we performed a PCR, a pan-chlamydia PCR, and a PCR for chlamydia abortus, and a PCR for para-chlamydia acantamubi. We also took a sample from the placenta to do a histological examination, and if the chlamydia, uh, pan-chlamydia PCR was positive, we did a specific PCR for chlamydia psittaci to detect chlamydia uh, psittaci um, infections. As a control group, we took 42 healthy calved cows and we took a sample from the placenta, of course. Um, we didn't do this, it was not an abortion, of course, but we also performed the PCR analy analysis and the um, histolo histological examination on those uh, control placentas. So on the next slide, we can see the results. You can see there are no uh, big uh, differences concerning the, the, the prevalence of chlamydia and chlamydia abortus, uh, chlamydia species. Um, there are some samples that were positive, 
but you can see that the most interesting thing is that there, are, there is a clear difference in prevalence of chlamydia, uh, ex excuse me, parachlamydia acantamoebae in the abortion samples compared to the non-abortion non group. 44% against 9.5% uh, in the, non the non-abortion sample group. So we performed also the histological examination on those samples because we all know that uh, chlamydia um, induce uh, strong um, placentitis, uh, purulent necrotic or yeah, purulent uh, placentitis. And we saw in our, in our cases that there are um, a lot of uh, placentitis, placentitis lesion detected, detected, but we couldn't find the difference in uh, prevalence of those lesions uh, in the positive samples, in the chlamydia or parachlamydia positive samples, compared to the neg negative abortion samples. So you see 24% uh, compared to 23%. We also found the same percentage in the abortion group of the, yeah, the, the total, the whole abortion group uh, samples. If we focus on the abortion group uh, samples, we can see there is, that there is no um, positive samples of uh, chlamydia abortus. We found some uh, chlamydia yeah, panchlamydia positive samples, but there was no difference in the non-diagnosed group uh, compared to the diagnosed group. We found some samples positive for chlamydia psittaci, of course, but also the same, no difference between the, the two groups. And we found no difference in the prevalence of, of parachlamydia cantamoebae in the non-diagnosed group uh, compared to the diagnosed group, 40% uh, against 46%. We did no statistics, but you can see there is no big difference uh, in those pre um, prevalence percentage. So in conclusion, we can say that uh, chlamydia abortus and chlamydia psittaci are probably not so important in bovine abortion in Flanders. Um, we can say that there is a substantial number, number of uh, bovine abortions that were positive, PCR positive, uh, for parachlamydia in Flanders, but only one out of uh, four uh, samples uh, show the purulent or purulent, purulent necrotic uh, placentitis. I think it's also important to, uh, to mention the fact that chlamydia and parachlamydia is also a zoonotic, uh, are, are also zoonotic uh, uh, agents, so we have to mention the potential zoonotic risk of bovine abortion material uh, in this case. And based on our study design, I think it's very, very difficult uh, to say if parachlamydia is a primary pathogen or maybe only, an impo or only important as a co-infection. So to end, I want to use the words of a lot of my colleagues uh, last week, uh, further research is necessary um, to detect all the things we want to know. We found the pathogens, but we don't know yet if it's very important in the uh, abortion, and maybe in the future we will know more about that. I want to thank uh, the people of the Federal Ages Agency for the Safety of the Food Chain of Belgium, uh, my colleagues of uh, Diergezondheid Zorg Vlaanderen, the Animal Health Center of Flanders, and of course the Flemish vets um, that collected all the samples for uh, the um, study. And I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Hans. Have we any questions? I'll, I'll start and just, uh, I may have missed it, but was, was chlamydia detected in any, or, or parachlamydia detected in any of the cases where there was another agent detected in yeah. association with another agent? Yeah, <clears throat> we saw it in this, uh, in this table. We found 40%, in 40% of the diagnosed abortions, we found also parachlamydia. In 5%, we found uh, chlamydia species, and 1% uh, chlamydia psittaci. So we found, um, yeah, we found a lot of uh, chlamydia and parachlamydia positive samples in the diagnosed population. Yeah. So it's not easy to say if it's um, really a primary pathogen or only important as a co-infection, yes. I think. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Have we any questions? Yeah. This, more right. Thanks very much. That was very interesting. Um, I was just wondering, is it, did you do any work to look at, could there be a possibility of environmental contamination, given the high percentages? Yeah, yeah it's a good question, because we took the sample, we, we, um, in, the, in the animal health center, we, we collect uh, the samples at the farm. So we took the samples uh, from the farm, and 
I think a lot of cases are contaminated with feces or environment, environmental things. And in our study, we took the samples from, from this, the healthy calved cows, were taken out of the cow during cesarean section. Those samples could be contaminated because uh, they are taken after the abortion, the other ones. So I think it's, it's very yeah, possible that it's con yeah, contaminated by the environment. Uh, because you can find it everywhere. You can find chlamydia psittaci in the, in the air, in, in the water, and things like that. I think it's the same for parachlamydia. So it could be uh, very possible, I think, yeah. yeah. Any other question? Well, if there's not, I'd just like uh, to thank uh, Dr. Van Loo, and we'll sh show your appreciation. <laughs>